This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Jasmine, welcome to Five Questions. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How did your parents, who were also in the entertainment industry, influence your career? <clears throat> um, they brought me everywhere with them. So my dad, um, he started out in, in theater, and I was that kid that was doing my homework in the lighting booth and hanging out with the costume designer and uh, running around backstage. Um, it was just part of my, it was part of my life. I was always like playing somewhere in the theater. Um, my mom had the most amazing record collection and I'd come home and I would, um, you know, find music through, you know, some of her amazing records, like, Inner Visions uh, by Stevie Wonder, one of my favorite albums of all time. And Living for the City was my audition song for uh, middle school, high school and uh, Berkeley College of Music. Um, and I found that on my own when I was about 10 years old. Um, so I, my parents literally brought me everywhere with them. I, you know, I when my dad was doing poetry at New York and Poets Cafe, like, I, I was at the cafe <laughs> till like two in the morning. Um, I was just, I was just kind of everywhere. And so um, I grew up uh, around a lot of like amazing actors and a theater company, Labyrinth Theater Company that um, all worked together as artists and, you know, um, directed for the first time and, and analyzed scripts together. And I, and uh being around just great music and, and musicians. So it, it literally was a part of my routine as a kid. And, um, you know, they've influenced me so much and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that they never really left me out. They kind of just included me in, you know, their everyday life as well as, as, as artists. Yeah. Well, some, you know, parents are like, yeah, don't you don't want to be in Broadway? You don't want to be on you know TV shows or be an actor actress. Like, go find a job in finance or something. Your parents were already doing it, so you had that firsthand exposure to see kind of how it worked and to see how much maybe joy you know people were feeling you know in that industry, especially your parents who were raising you at the same time. Uh, speaking of, um, you had a huge breakout with Hamilton. What was the biggest highlight during your time as a cast member? <laughs> There's so many, but I think the the biggest highlight for me was um, Prince is one of my favorite musicians of all time. And I even for my audition for Peggy Schuyler and Mariah Reynolds, I sang um, How Come You Don't Call Me by Prince was was one of my songs. Um, and he can't he the day before that he came to the show. He surprised all of the cast of Hamilton and the color purple and invited us to a party after the show. And this party is uh, supposed to be crazy too. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was like, it, it was something out of a, a, a dream. He, he invited us to this like small little like lounge and this woman was DJing and, you know, so many people were there and then he like put on a show. And he was like, it was like this balcony and Jennifer Hudson came out and, and sang and, and it was just, it literally felt like a dream. And, um, I like, I personally, like I, I got to meet him too. And, and I got to say hi to him and, you know, um, he came to the show the next day and, and I think a couple of months later he, he passed away. And so it was just a huge moment for me to meet one of my favorite artists of all time, um, and for him to see me perform and for me to experience kind of like this dreamlike way of, of, of meeting Prince and, and kind of being in his, in his element and, it, it, you know, his energy. And, um, it, it really was like something, um, out of a movie. Um, and then I think the other, the, the, the other thing for me was when the album came out 
the soundtrack, the album to to Hamilton, and I'll never forget it. We the 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 first time we performed when the album came out, people were singing along to it already, and so it was a moment of oh my god, like this this is about to be so much more than than I ever dreamed of. And it's about to hit people so hard. <laughs> and what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pandora's box is open. You can't, you can't close yeah, it. it. It was such a beautiful moment. We saw people, you know, mouthing the words already. It was like the day after the album came out and everybody knew all the words to it already. It was, it was, that was also an incredible moment as well. Yeah, high impact. I would think I... You know, I do a lot of professional speaking, and I think if my idol is watching me speak, I think I trip up or have a heart attack or maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, I I the next day it was one of my mo- I was so nervous that day, um, and like we just hung out, like we just like <laughs> you know partied, and it was such a it was such a beautiful moment. So um, I'm very grateful for that. How did your background in theater impact your storytelling and performance in Blind Spotting? Ooh. Um, oh my God, in so many ways, um, theater is everything. Theater is my base. Um, and I think me learning how to be really grounded in my performance and being, you know, trying to be the most honest I can be as an actor in my performance, I have I learned in theater kind of not dropping the ball and using other people's energy and what they give to me and bouncing off of that. I, I learned all from theater. I learned all in my, you know, acting training. Um, I do, I break the fourth wall in this show and I do heightened verse and I kind of approach them like Shakespearean monologues. And so the way that I analyze the script or I analyze the verse, I break them all down in in a bunch of thoughts and um, kind of look at it like that instead of me rapping or me even doing spoken word. It's 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 all the things how I would approach a monologue in theater or like a Shakespearean monologue, even more like that. Um is how I I approach these these heightened verse. Yeah, the reason why I asked that question, I ask it a lot for a lot of people, especially in entertainment, but even sports and and business, is that you know what you've already done, your kind of foundational like skills, let's say in entertainment, prepares you for the next thing, whether you're recognizing it as you're making that move or not. And now in hindsight, you're like, oh, well, because I learned these type of skills, learn how to do this and perform and get comfortable and confident. Now, like, because, you know, you know, I'm doing this new thing, I'm now set up for success. And then who knows what else you have that coming down the pipeline, eventually, like all of these skills, all the, all these experiences are only going to help you. Yes, absolutely. Without you even knowing. <laughs> exactly. And how has the show and role pushed you as an artist? And what have you learned from the experience? Oh my God, this show pushes me. I I always say like, I, I walk out of each season as a better artist. I think a lot of it has to do, at, unfortunately with TV sometimes is you don't get a lot of time. And so the biggest thing, you know, it, it really is relying on the actor who has a lot to do. I think going into like the toolbox or as we said before going into like their training and really relying on that and so this show has really pushed me in so many ways and I've I've (laughs) I've like often said to Rafa and Diggs like I don't know if I can do this (laughs) that's like a (laughs) I've said this multiple times to them and they've always turned around to me and they've said yes you can what are you talking about? You know, you're Jasmine Cephas Jones, of course. Like, we didn't write this because we didn't think that you could do it. And so, you know, every time I have that little seed of doubt, the show always pushes me, and I and I come out the other side of like, whoa, <laughs> I did that. Um, and a lot of it is with with time. You get 
you know, you'll get rewrites last minute. You know, a, a lot of the verses I've done, we've either run out of light, you know, we're running out of light. And so we're so close with time or, you know, that last verse that I did in episode five, um, I got it the night before because of rewrites. And so I'm, I'm really relying on, you know, how quickly I'm memorizing and how much, you know, I'm putting the thought and ideas and, and me analyzing what I'm, what I'm given so quickly. And so I have to make choices quickly and I have to rely on my gut. I have to rely on, on what I think Ashley would do and, and, and that's okay, you know? So when we get to set, there's also not a lot of rehearsal time. So it's really just like, I have to make a lot of like hard, you know, solid acting decisions on, on what I want to do with this character in a very short amount of time. And that really pushes you, I think, as an artist, um, because you want all the time in the world for preparation, you know? I think I'm a perfectionist in that way. I'm, I want to, like, have time to sit and think, you know, with with my script. And so blind spotting and being in a TV show kind of forces me to, to get out of that and to really just go, okay, go. It's like a, uh, you know, uh, um, what do they call it? Um like a, a good exercise almost. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a lot of kind of mental challenges to get through to be able to kind of perform and adapt to this medium. And what's your best piece of career advice? You're you're always gonna have some fear. And I don't think fear will ever go away. I think it's learning how to move through the fear, whatever that is, um, and learning how to navigate through it, right? I think like whether, whether that's like that big audition, whether that's, you know, you finally get the part and you're so nervous, <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's, it's um, that fear, you know, that fear is there because you care, you know? And I think that nervousness, that fear, I think it's it's learning how to to cut through that and still um, learning and having the tools to to be able to still have that, but like perform with it and and work through it and not let that stop you. Don't let the fear stop you. Learn how to work through the fear. I love it. Well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you.